Welcome to Bunnyfish Crafts. I'm your host Heather, known as Bunnyfish on Ravelry, Plurk, Instagram, and YouTube. Today is Monday, the 12th of May, 2014, and this is episode 78, 4D Experience. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. You are not going to have a 4D experience. I had one this week. We went to the zoo because Steve's mom was driving through um, from Tennessee back up to Ohio. So she stopped and we went to the zoo for the day on Wednesday. It was super fun and it was the first, first time that we went to um, a 4D movie. The zoo has short 15 minute experiences. So it's the perfect length of time for the kids to sit through and I'd never been to a 4D movie. So the way it worked was we had 3D glasses. So that was kind of cool. Mara did not wear them through the whole movie, so I assume it was very blurry for her. And Gabriel only wore them through half of the movie because he had them on before the movie started. And then he took them off and I didn't notice. So I looked over at him and he wasn't wearing them. And I was like, what are you doing? Put on your glasses. And he was like, whoa, after he put them on because then things were um, 3D'd for him. And then the fourth dimension, when people stomped, we saw Rio which Gabriel loves because it's about two blue macaws. So he was really excited about that. Hi. Hi. Did you like seeing Rio at the zoo? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, go fix it in your room and shut the door. But you may help me. After I record. So this the seats shook when people stomped or when things fell over. At the beginning of the movie, you start off in the rainforest, so they sprayed scent into the air, so it smelled like rainforesty or like fake rainforest. I've never been to the rainforest, so I don't know what it smells like. There's some water in the movie, so when things on screen got splashed, you got spritzed with water. I didn't really enjoy that part, but Mara really, really was like, what is going on? Someone is is invading my bubble. That's not okay. So that kind of made that worth it for me because I could just laugh at her. It was a lot of fun. We went on the carousel. We went on the train. We did all the. Th we saw all the things that the kids really liked because that's what their Grammy wanted to do was take a zoo trip with the kids and do all the things that they liked. I think we went through a quarter of the zoo in five hours, maybe a third. But we definitely did not see the entire zoo. Since we got the zoo membership, we have yet to go by the bear area. So it was a lot of fun. Gabriel enjoyed it. Grammy enjoyed it. It was good times. The charity knit along still going on. I, again, did not make anything for it this week, but um, this past week. But this coming week, I am because... Remember I made those squares for the Skylar Blanket Project and I sent them off? Well, we have another blanket in the queue, which is tragic because obviously that means that someone lost their child. And we're making a blanket in memory of Shandi. So I, spot, I offered to sponsor it, which means that not only am I collecting blanket stuff in general, I'm also putting this particular one together. And... If you're interested in sending in squares for this blanket, we need 30 to 36. We either do 5 by 6 squares or 6 by 6 squares. I like to do the 6 by 6 squares. I just think it's a, a bigger hug to give. So I'll be making squares to round out what we have. I personally have about 5 or 6 in the sock, in the, uh, the sock, in the square stash because people send in squares to me. Um, just to hold on to so that when we have a blanket, we have a jump, a starting off point. So I have five or six. Another of the collectors has several that she's going to send. But, you know, if she only has five or six, that's only 10 or so, which is only a third of what we need. So if you want to make a square, they can be knit or crocheted, um, eight by eight, machine washable. For this particular blanket, we're collecting um, neutrals and girly colors. You can use any pattern. 
Um, it's better if the yarn is like DK through bulky because then the squares just match up together better. But, you know, any square is good. Um, if you want to make a square for that blanket, just send me a PM when it's finished and I will send you my address so that you can send it and I will put it in the blanket. And it would count towards the, cha the charity knit along. So that's a win. Finished objects. I finished Suzu's petals. As you can see, it sits um, pretty high up on my neck. And it's quite a large cowl. It's bigger than I expected it to be. I blocked it kind of aggressively because I wanted the points to be pointy. So it's pretty long. This is my belly button right here. So this is, well, this is my boob line. So it comes under my boob line. I think blocking the points out was a really good idea though because it gives definite shape. And the nice thing about this is that it really is a cowl, so it's connected back here. You don't have to worry about fussing with the ends like you would with a shawl. So it stays put the entire day. This is made out of my hand spun. I have 18 yards left from that skein. I still have another skein of the hand spun, so I can make a whole other thing. I can make another Zuzu's petals if I wanted. That was worked on US size 7, 4.5 millimeters. I sent that off to a friend of mine. It was her birthday last week, so it should be there today. I thought it was going to be there on Saturday, but fail. Fail post office. So hopefully it'll be there today. Works in progress. Still working on Misa. Misa did not get a ton of love, but here she is. There's her face. These are handmade buttons from Gwen. And I used Karen Pound of Love in white for the antlers and Red Heart Super Saver in buff for the main body of Misa. And then because Misa is a moose, she has, are they hooves if they're moose still? Is that correct? So she has four of them, and these are made out of the coffee colorway of Red Heart Super Saver. And I just decided to do all four of them at once so that I could put this brown away and not have to keep it out. And so I'm a few days behind where I wanted to be for Misa, but still good progress. It'll be done by the end of the month. I'm not that worried about it. The pattern is Mildred Moose by Lisa... Boschman and I worked that on a USD 3.75 millimeter hook. Please shut the door. <clears throat> okay, so spinning. Carnival Bears, which was dyed by Hippie Penguin. It is Superwash BFL. Can you tell a difference? I think you can tell a difference, which is why I'm showing you. I'm not doing a ton of work on this. I'm doing about 10 minutes a day, but I put three layers onto this turtle last week. So I think that's a, enough of a difference to show you. It's in my Stitch by Jessalou bag, which I have turned inside out because I enjoy this fabric and it, you know, it reverses just fine. Um, so it's blues and browns and natural. It's beautiful. And this is the very first turtle. I have eight ounces total to spin. It's going to be a really long-term spin. It's already been a long-term spin, but that's fine. It doesn't have any particular purpose right now. I'm also sp spinning the Superwash Merino from Perchance to Knit. And look, you can see some of the green. A few layers back, it was a bunch of green, and then I immediately covered it with several layers of gray. But I think it's gorgeous. And this pencil roving, this is the first time I've spun using pencil roving, and it's kind of cool. It takes a lot of the drafting work away with it being pencil roving. 
It doesn't mean I'm going to go exclusively to pencil roving or anything, but it's pretty cool. And the ball is substantially smaller than it was last week. In exciting knitting news, I finished the first sock in the sock design. This is the bottom of the foot. And I used a short row heel and my wide toe. So that's the bottom of the sock, which means this week I am going to be writing up the pattern. So if you're interested in test knitting, I would love to hear from you. Um, I have a 62, 64 count sock, and I'm also going to do a 72, right? That's or thereabouts. I haven't charted it out yet, but um, it'll be the next size up. So PM me if you're interested in testing either size. And I did the first sock cuff down, and I'm doing the second sock toe up so I can make sure that it all works both ways. So I will be looking for toe up and cuff down in two different sizes. PM me if you're interested, or I guess I can or put it in the episode thread or something, just get in touch with me if you're interested in test knitting it. And it would work up in pretty much any yarn, I think. I used a crazy variegated to see if it would work and it definitely works. So anything would work fine with it, I think. And I'm working that on US size one 2.25 millimeter needles. The yarn is from 716 Knit, 716 Sock, in the explicit name colorway. And in case you watch Buffy, it's a spike quote. So I thought of Lisa when I watched that episode and then found out where my sock, um, my yarn name came from because all of 716 knit colorways, except for club colorways, are named after Buffy quotes. I worked on the Mystic Spiral Sock by Josh Ricks a lot. This was my walking knitting at the zoo. So I got a lot done and then I finished it because it was easy. Mods to the pattern. So it's pretty much, it's kind of a formula sock. Like you can change things about it and it will be fine. So I used the toe that I like because I have really wide toes. And then I used the pattern. I substituted in a Fish Lips Kiss Heel, which is a $1 pattern on Ravelry. And I really like the way it fits, so that's good. I'll probably use it again in the future. I also really like the way that gussets and heel flaps fit, but I think that I like the Fish Lips Kiss equally to that. So if a pattern specifically calls for a gusset and heel flap, I'll do that, but if it calls for a short row, I will be substituting in this fish lips kiss heel. Other mods to the pattern, I did more rounds, um, more rounds before I started the second stripe so that it would be equal, equal number of rounds from here, from this last short row bit to the heel and then from the heel to the next short row bit. So this portion is longer than the pattern calls for. I also didn't do the increases and decreases and stuff in the bias area, which results in these bumps on the side of the sock when it's not on the foot, but when it does, is on the foot, you can't tell. It just looks like a sock. So I'm going to do that for the second one and probably any subsequent ones because I'm lazy and why do the extra work if it looks just fine when it's on your foot. So that is the first one, and I cast on the second one yesterday. This is my progress. I really, really like it in variegated, as well as self-striping. It was designed for self-striping, but I think it looks cool in the variegated, the way that things pull and the directionality of the sock. This yarn is from Illuminated Yarns. It is in the Iridium base in the Jubilation colorway. The Iridium base is um, VFL Nylon. I think it's 
25, but I don't have the tag on me. But Mystic Spirals are worked on US 1, 2.25. And so are these, these next ones. This colorway, well, this yarn is from 716 Knit. It's on 716 Sock in If the Apocalypse Comes, Beep Me. It was the exclusive colorway for the ZK last year, and here are my socks. Let's see if you can see the, the Argyle pattern today. Uh, maybe a little bit. Kind of. I, because I'm making up this pattern, I decided to go with the fish lips kiss heel so that I wouldn't have to worry about gusset and heel flap and increasing and stuff. And totally lost my train of thought on these socks. And I've been trying to regain it since Mara left with her cheese stick. She's come in three times for cheese sticks for me to open them. Um, these are going to be thigh highs. I would like them to be done by the end of the month, but the hard deadline is done by the ZK, which is the middle of next month. So if they don't get done, not the end of the world, as long as they're done by the ZK. Temperature thigh highs got a lot of attention. They are now ugh, this long. So they are current through the end of March, I think. That sounds right. It's February or March, but I'm pretty sure it's March. Yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to do April today, I think. Parts of April. I can't remember. They are now officially at the top of my kneecap. So yay, they're almost thigh highs. And they will definitely be thigh highs when they're done. I think I'm going to... Originally, I was going to use this gray at the top of the thigh highs, but I'm going to keep trying them on. I don't know if that's going to happen if I think they're going to be too high. So I might just do ribbing in the actual temperature colors, but I don't know yet. That's still several days away before I have to make that decision. I love the way these are working up. I love the, the stitch pattern that I kind of winged, and I really, really think that I made good decisions on what colors to use for what temperatures as far as everything working harmoniously, which was not the case when I picked my original colors, and then I realized that some of the colors I had picked originally weren't going to have enough yarn, so I changed them and all sorts of whatever. But I think they look really cool now. And they're definitely going back into the orange colorway near the top because it is hot here. It was 82 when we were at the zoo, which is why we only stayed for five hours. And the last one is caught on a water bottle. The magic ball shawl that I'm just kind of winging. The temperature socks were worked on US size 1 up to the knee, or up to mid-calf, and then I changed to US size 2. And I did end up doing increases around the knee so that it would fit nicely up to the thigh. So here's my magic ball shawl. And I'm just trying to do a repeat a day. So hopefully I'll get it done by the end of the month, but if I need more repeats than that, then I won't. This is what my magic cake looks like right now. As you can see, I'm almost through with the, the colorway from Sophie's Toes, this variegated. And um, I still have a, a little bit of the green, the solid green that I'm using to get through. So next up, next week, you will be seeing this color right here, the blue and green. That's a striping from 716 Knit. That was Gabby's color. And then probably the rest of Josh's yarns because this dark green 
that's striping with the variegated is a Josh yarn, and this green that's striping is a Josh yarn. And then there are two other colors that were Kira's yarns, but I think they came from Josh's stash because she just doesn't have a lot of um, green scrappies. So what a nice big brother to let her play in our game. Did I say that I'm just using a lace pattern that I found in a stitch dictionary and then um, modified to be more what I wanted? That's what I'm using on the edging. And that is worked on a US size 4 3.5 millimeter needle. Sock yarn blanket. I did nine squares this week. I don't know why I always sit on this as if I'm not going to show it to you. I don't know. I did nine squares this week and they are all ZK yarns. I have enough ZK yarns to get me through a few more days and then I will be starting on the next the next rotation of something else. I don't know, I haven't decided which one I'm going to use next. But it's getting huge. It's up to 580 squares. So officially under 200 squares to go. And I'm sitting on the corner over there so you can't see that. I also did nine hexapuffs this week. These two are, suddenly I can't remember, um, Mountain Colors, Crazy Foot in Post Office, I think. They look crazy different in size. One's probably just stuffed more or not pulled out. Oh, there. That's better. Okay. Sometimes the yarn gets all pressed in on each other and they look different sizes, but then you stretch them a little and they fit fine. So those two happened. And then the rest is Haley yarn. I have a very small amount left of Haley yarn, and then I will be using other scraps, which is why I pulled this out because I found this scrap and I was like, oh, we'll change it up a little and not use Haley yarn. That was yesterday and Saturday. This is a celebratory hex buff, so it has two different striping colorways, which I think work up really, really nicely together. And then these are all heavy yarns, and they all have tails on them to make sewing in easier. I found that having the tail attached in the first place is easier than having to attach yarn. Crazy, right? This is actually not a Haley yarn. Oh, I guess that string was part of the stuffing. I was using. Hmm. This is um, one of the colors that I'm using in my temperature thigh eyes. Tomorrow, no, today, I'm going to be using the very last stripe in this colorway, unless for some crazy reason it decides it needs to be 29 degrees or below in the middle of May, which that would be awful because plants and stuff won't survive that. So hopefully not, but I had a, a large, um, I was going to have a large amount left over because I'm using mostly scrap bits of yarn and I had two separate scraps. So I just made this out of one of those so I could change it up a little. And this is Premier Serenity Sock in Indigo. I wanted to show you something else about my sock yarn, or about my hex puffs, and I totally forgot. So I'm going to get that. So I've been making these, um, these hexapods, which is just three hexapods put together to make the blanket. And I am attempting to make each pod with a celebratory hexapuff, but sometimes there aren't enough celebratory hexapuffs because I don't finish enough things in a week to have that many. Not a big deal, but if there if there are celebratory ones, I like to put them in. Um, so I've been making these pods, and I said when the bag was full, I would start putting together my blanket. Well, the bag is definitely full, and I have started putting them together. I'm only putting one pod on a week, so it's going to take time to grow. But here's the start of my blanket. I think that 
I'm pretty sure that I want them to be on a slant. So this would be the bottom row and they would be kind of like this on an angle because I don't mind them having this, um, this ridge on the outside of the blanket. So this is the beginning and you can see this is a special one. That's a celebratory one. This is a celebratory one. Um, I guess this group didn't have a celebratory one, but that's where, that's where my blanket is right now. It's only three pods big, but it'll be four this week. And I will show you that when there's big progress to see. So next month, maybe. I am going to jump to what I'm reading and then go back to new things. The reading section is really short, so if you usually leave during that part, don't because you're going to want to see my new things, which I'm putting at the end. I finished reading Hyperbole and a Half by Ali Brosh. Very funny. Everything I expected. Um, Steve read it in an hour because it's got pictures and it's basically, it's kind of like a graphic, no, I wouldn't say a graphic novel because they're a group of short stories, so kind of like a comic book. I really liked it. It was very, very funny. It does have offensive language, so look out for that if you're sensitive to it. I'm still reading Model Land by Tyra Banks. Oh, here's my here's my thing. 75% Superwash BFL, 25% Nylon. This is the Illuminated nar Yarns thing that I said I didn't have, but I did. Um, I'm about three quarters of the way through the book. I'm enjoying the story for what it is. It's not a great story, but it's a, it's an interesting story. Um, I think I'm just having trouble with the writing style, maybe. I don't know. It does have a lot of social commentary about standards of beauty and things like that. So that's really interesting. And that's why I'm reading it for the social commentary more than the story. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. It's not bad. It's just not great. And last night, Model Land was downstairs when I was going to bed. And my desk was closer when I was going to bed because I keep the library books that I still have to read on my desk. So instead of going downstairs to get the model land, plus the dogs are both put up, and if I had gone down there, they would have both started barking and be like, why are you forsaking us? So I didn't. I just grabbed this off my desk and said, this is Pandemonium. It's the second book in the Delirium series trilogy. I don't know if it's a series or a trilogy. I can't remember. So this is the second one. I read Delirium. I liked it well enough. Uh, the style, the storytelling style changed between the first and second book. Now there is a past and a future. That's how they, that's how the storytelling works. I've only read two, two chapters. One was a then chapter and one was a now chapter. So that's why I'm making this assumption that things are like that. Maybe not though. Maybe it's all in the now and they just had the epilogue be then. I don't know. Only 40 pages in. Really enjoying it. I think that I will probably finish Pandemonium before I finish Model Land because I like this writing style better than Model Land. It's not bad. I just don't love it. Okay, so new things. Did you go to Maryland Sheep and Wool? I did not go to Maryland Sheep and Wool. But Lorraine from my knitting group, the one who loaned me the spindles, she went to Maryland and she brought me back something. There's only one thing that I really wanted and it was from the Spanish Peacock. The Spanish Peacock makes tools for fiber crafting and they're really, they're, if you're not going to a handful of fiber festivals, they're super difficult to find. So this is some fluff that Lorraine left in the bag. 
because, you know, she tested things out and whatever. She left some fluff in the bag. And this is, you hear that crinkle? It means good things are coming. This is my new supported spindle. Oh, it's beautiful. Now I need to learn how to spin with a supported spindle, like actually learn. So this will be coming up probably not this month, maybe not until after the ZK because I do have some other spinning projects that I'm trying to work on, but oh, it's so pretty. I love it. I love that pink whirl. It's birch, but dyed or stained pink. I don't know. I wasn't there. I didn't ask questions. So that's birch, and that's what the inside looks like. It's super pretty. And then the shaft is made of ebony, and it is 38 grams. And it's really long. I found that I liked the longer supported spindles rather than the shorter ones when she was, when she let me borrow them. And I asked for a darker shaft and a lighter whirl. And apparently there were only two that had the dark shafts with the light whirls. And the other one had a darker light whirl than this one. So she, she got it hoping that I would like it. And I love it. It's black and pink. And it's hot pink and black. So if you were going to go with pink, this would be the acceptable pink. I'm super excited to start learning how to use that. But again, it needs to wait on the back burner for a little while until I get some of the spinning things that I want to get done, done. And then the rest of my new things are patterns. This one is called Show Your Stripes by Ann Campbell. And Tanya sent this to me for Mother's Day. That's so exciting. Mother's Day was yesterday and we went out to lunch and we went to, um, we got ice cream. But other than that, like I didn't get Mother's Day presents because my kids aren't old enough. And, you know, Steve could have gotten me a Mother's Day present from them, but I really want Mother's Day presents to, I want the presents to be from my kids when they're old enough to know what they're doing, if they're going to get me presents at all. So that was really exciting. It's the only Mother's Day present I got, and I'm excited for that pattern. It's been in my queue for a long time. I would say probably two years. I can't remember exactly. I didn't look it up, but it's been in my queue for a really long time, and I really appreciate that so much. Thank you, Tanya. The second pattern that I got it are called the Kitten Poker Socks. This is side view. Kitten Poker Socks by Lisa Tomko. She does the Knit Two Together podcast, and she designed this pattern because she wants to go to the ZK and to, um, I really want to say it's Comic-Con, but that might not be right, in Chicago to see James Marsters, and obviously you need money for both, so she designed this um, to help fund those ventures, and she called it Kitten Poker because Spike, who James Marsters plays on Buffy, plays Kitten Poker. So here are more pictures of the pattern. It's a Ravelry download. Um, I'm not exactly sure how much. I can't remember. It's either five or six, I think. I'll put it down at the bottom of the screen as I'm talking. So thank you, Lisa, for gifting me that pattern. I love it. It's That will be up on my needles soon, within a year. I can't promise, like, next because I can't. But... The last thing that I got is what I'm going to talk about for an extensive period of time at the end of my podcast, as I do every week. So this is the 716 Knits ebook, which I got for my donation to Jenna's Indiegogo. 
So yay! I got this ebook and I'm really excited. I'm not going to show you everything, but I'm going to show you a lot of things because I did a lot of test knitting for this ebook. So if you've been waiting for patterns to come out from Jenna that I test knit, this is the ebook that they're in. So go buy it. I think it's $25 on Ravelry and it has 16 patterns. So 16 patterns for $25 is a deal. And there are all sorts of things in here. There are, um, well, I'll just show you. I'm not going to tell you all of them, but I will try to show you different things. So this is the Skyline Beverage Cozy. So that's fun. That's the first pattern and it's color work. Then the Blizzard Headband, which I test knit. And I really liked it uses bulky yarn. And it's a, it knits up really, really fast. We had a one night knit along in the BKN when the pattern came out. There's a cowl, a market bag, very nice stuff, a rocking the Knox shawl. I did not test knit this, but I really like it. So I'm going to show it to you. All of these patterns, the inspiration is drawn from things around Buffalo, New York. Here's another little shawl that is quite lovely. The photographs in this ebook are beautiful. They're taken all around Buffalo, obviously. Um, they're... The patterns use a variety of yarns, so that scarf was in a fingering. The market bag was in um, cotton worsted weight. This, this is a cowl that's in sport weight, so I'm going to just show you. Maybe I will just show you everything. Not everything, everything, but almost everything. So that is a gorgeous cowl. I did test in it, the forest lawn socks. So those are the forest lawn socks. There are short mitts that call for fingering weight yarn. These socks are called the terminal and I test knit them as well. You guys get to see how messy my desk is and all the reflections. There's a scarf in fingering weight. A lot of socks and they're beautiful socks they're all they're all complex ish there's a DK weight shawl which um, which has a really cool edging and sort of reminds me of the age of breast and steam kind of not not mm. It has a way different um, edging. I think I think it's probably because it's done in DK and Age of Breast and Steam is done in DK. This is the new new Wanda slouch hat. I'm mispronouncing that. I recall her saying it, and I don't remember how she said it. I test knit this in purple. I test knit this in purple. It is written for DK, but I worked it in a sport, and it worked fine. Do you recognize these socks? Do you? That's my hand spun in an ebook. These are the hand spun socks that I knit and they're the bridge socks. So again, it's my hand spun in an ebook. And I knit those socks too. I gave them to Jenna as a gift. So I don't actually own any hand spun socks. I just made a pair and gave them to my friend because I felt like they should go to her. I realized I was going to have, have enough yarn to make them in Jenna's size. She has large feet and that they would be tall. So I was like, yes, I'm doing this. She should have some. These are the Frammy socks. 
They are beautiful. Her grandma was the inspiration. And they're beautiful, but man, those socks, you need to pay attention. I don't know why I felt like I was, I needed to pay attention. And it's super intuitive, but I don't know. There's a lot going on on the sock in a good way. And this is nice. This is, um, the last page is for indie dyers who gave yarn and also me because I hand spun that yarn. So that's exciting. It's a really great ebook. As you saw, it had, you know, several pairs of socks, a market bag, cowls, shawls, a little cup cozy. It's a really great accessories book and it uses, it had a headband, it uses all weights of yarn. Check it out because it's a great collection of patterns and totally worth it for $25. I would have bought it for $25 had I not donated to get it. And that is all I have for you this week. I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string. I will see you next week. Bye.